Happy weekend guys, welcome back. So the stock market made overall all time highs with the S&P index closing over 5,000 for the first time ever. Now I've been bullish for the past several months ever since this bull market started in October of 2022. So it's now approaching 14, 15 months of the bull market. Let's just put on the SPX here and take a look at these all time highs. First time closing over 5,000. Of course, we had the bear market for about a year here that began late 21. And this is the over, you know, the 14, 15 month bull market I'm talking about right now. We know about the five month correction right here. Boom, boom, boom. We've been trading this up the entire way and it's good to see that now all-time highs for me are very bullish some people might think this is time for profit taking but you can see how we've just blown through that right and i'm going to take a look at some data and show you guys why i'm still bullish we're going to see what happens in the past when we reach all-time highs and we're going to see why this is happening right well i'm going to start with that Chip stock rise as Biden unveils $5 billion CHIPS Act plan to establish an R&D consortium. You guys may remember that Biden signed the $52 billion CHIPS Act that was designed to enhance the domestic semiconductor industry by providing manufacturing and research development incentives. Now, all the semiconductor companies love this extremely bullish as they were able to receive these government subsidies to build enhanced factories, build manufacturing capabilities, etc., on United States soil. US is doing this because every country is doing this right europe has its own version of the chips act china's trying to fund japan is funding factories chips and foundries right because everybody wants semiconductors um, on on their soil because semiconductors are the new oil they run all technology right from computers to iphone smartphones to satellites to weapon and defense missiles and, and kind of war machines right and so it's very very important the united states didn't like that we relied on on taiwan quite frankly for most of the chip manufacturing as taiwan semiconductor tsm probably the most important company in the world is based in tsm in taiwan they are the biggest by far by far like a monopoly on the chip manufacturing industry and there's that threat of china invading taiwan as always so the u.s wants um what we want to manufacture on, on, on u.s soil europe wants to manufacture in europe so that's why all these chips act were a couple years ago um enacted and this is some new news on friday um part of this chips act Biden announced a $5 billion semiconductor research consortium. And so in an effort to enhance processor design and hardware innovation, it's gonna establish a national semiconductor technology center and become the second major research and development investment from the Chips and Science Act. A lot of companies are, you know, Intel is a big one. They're building two factories. TSM Taiwan Semi is building factories on American soil, global foundries, etc. cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, Intel's getting into the foundry game where they're gonna, manuf they're gonna start this domestic manufacturing business and become a foundry for other semiconductor companies. Some companies are only designers like Nvidia and AMD. They design the chips. They have to go be manufactured somewhere else like TSM, like Intel now. So Intel looks like they're trying to make Intel the kind of homegrown US champion of, of this but you know there's been some problems right the biden administration has been criticized as funds from the chips have been slow to be doled out in fact i believe there was news just last week about intel slowing down its plans to build one of these new factories because of this right um delays the 20 billion dollar chip factory in ohio and so we got to keep track of what's going to happen with this but for now Biden unveiled in this new $5 billion consortium and it's boosting markets, right? If we look at, uh, you know, I've been saying this, I, I showed you guys yesterday, check out yesterday's video, how we, when we talked about semiconductors lead the market, they always lead first. Semiconductors made all-time highs, then the NASDAQ, then the S&P made all-time highs. Semiconductors pulled back first, then they pulled back, and now we made all-time highs again, right? And so semiconductors lead, this has been going on forever, right? You can go to the monthly time frame over here, and you know, this has been going on since, you know, forever, this thing is super bullish it's like a bitcoin chart but over 20 years instead of you know uh, 10 years and you know this goes even further back than this right we can go to individual companies like nvidia before the indices 1999 amd you know into the 80s into the 70s and you can see what these charts look like intel as well you know they were you know these charts <laughs> We're at, trading at one cent at one point in time, right? And so semiconductors lead the markets. So, you know, this is all bullish, this this new $5 billion facility. And, you know, all time highs, you can look at 
maybe the XSD, the S&P ETF hasn't made all-time highs here. Maybe a bit of a laggard trade. This one's more equally weighted amongst the, the semiconductor companies, whereas the SOX has more weighting to NVIDIA and some of the larger players. Okay, but let's get back to the all-time highs for the SPYs. So what does this mean? Why do I think this is bullish and it's not a selling opportunity? Well, let's go back to, you know, when, when this thing makes all-time highs, you know, generally what happens? Let's go back here to, uh, I mean, you can just see it all over the place, right? We'll start from the start, from when the SPYs, let's say this is a, a, a kind of flatting range, right? Uh, like so, when we make all-time highs right here, it's a bullish act, right? And we're making all-time highs for months, all-time highs, pull back, all-time highs, right? And so that's essentially from 95, 96, a year here. Um, and, and again, you're gonna say this pulled back from these all-time highs for a couple years here, but that's not really what happened, right? What happened is this is not, I mean, this is more all-time highs, but the all-time highs were made here, right? When these all-time highs were broken here in January. And so, from January, you know, this continued up another 7% on the indices, right? And then it kind of pulled back for a few weeks. This is actually the daily chart for a couple of months, all time highs, okay? But again, uh, you know, boom, pulled back. This thing flags into kind of an average. And you can see, right? Sometimes, right, when we make fresh all time highs, it's a bullish thing usually. And sometimes it'll be bullish for a few days. Then you'll pull back into the moving averages, maybe a shakeout, and then. You know that's what happens sometimes one or two month pullback but most of the time you know it's like these other ones where you know this is the all-time high we make a new all-time high right here and it goes on for months and, and years right that's that's what happens most of the time sometimes you do get that deeper correction but then you break out months and years sometimes you get that deeper correction but again all-time highs has to be a bullish thing there's no reason to be bearish for all-time highs we break out here and we go on a you know a tremendous rally right i'm stopping here because yeah we pull back to the 50 but you know if you entered here there's no reason you know to not trail your stops and and i mean it went bullish forever it never went that low ever again right and so you can see it over and over again you know we break through these previous all-time highs it's a bull market right we break through these previous all-time highs we continue higher um, this is the, the crash, right? The 2000 crash. So this was a bear market. Let's see what happened when those all time highs, um, seven years later were broken here. This is probably the one instance, right? All time highs right here. The one instance where we broke it in just one or two days, a couple days, um, that lasted before we pulled on um, back, right? The bear market still had another few years left in it, right? The 08 kind of crash, right? So the dot com bubble bear market you can some people would call this whole thing a bear market because you know we haven't made all-time highs yet bit of a fake out here and then the 08 recession bear market right okay this continued on here but, you know essentially for me this is i mean this is a six years this is a bull market to me because it's up and riding the emas here riding the 50 ema here for six years and it leads to all-time highs you know, how can you, you can't call that a bit, what are you gonna stay out of the market for six years or be, or be shorting this thing, trying to short for six years while the market's going straight up? No, right, this is a bear market, this is a bull market. It just so happens that when all-time highs were made, in this one particular instance, it only lasted a few days and we had the 08, 08 uh, recession, right? But every other instance, you, we usually break out all-time highs and ride higher, right? Break all-time highs, ride higher, right? Kind of choppy sometimes, but it's a bullish thing overall. We're, we're, we're gonna look for signs, right? We're gonna look for signs, like always. You know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get into the nitty gritty, but back then you can kinda, you know, look at this double top or head and shoulders pattern. You know, you come down, you get a daily red tag on a Jupiter pendulum, pull right back into the neckline of that head and shoulders to retest the moving averages. And you know, you do have that red shade divergent. And so that is a sell signal, you know, a lower low right here. Another fresh red tag on a Jupu, pull back into the moving averages, you know, divergent red shade, that's a sell signal. And so, you know, we'll be able to track these things in real time, but generally, you know, the market recovered after 08 all time highs. And, you know, this led to a, a bull market of epic proportions where it just rallied, right? Rallied, rallied, okay? Rallied for um, from 13 to 15 for two years, right? Then it pulled on back, little mini bear market here, a consolidation market. What happens when we break all time highs? Well, again, pull back to the 50, but generally a very bullish situation here. Okay, and so on and so on. And we see this throughout history, COVID crash, broke all-time highs. Okay, a pullback, shake out below the 50, double bottom, 
but a huge move, right? A massive move. I'm expecting the same thing here. Um, that was kind of just uh, just so you guys can see what it looks like, right? So we've broken all time highs. It hasn't been a one or two day thing, right? This is a big impulse move. So I'm bullish here. You gotta be bullish until until proven otherwise. You know, even if we, we're gonna pull back and double bottom into the 21 or into the 50 moving average and some kind of double bottom, you gotta be looking to buy setups when those conditions, when that pullback, when that correction shows you oversold conditions, right? Unless, right, we start trading below it and start tagging red on the Jupiter pendulum, then we're gonna have those red flags activated and potentially be looking to go into some sort of deeper correction or some bear market, right? But for now, it's bullish and we've seen that many times it can be bullish for months, many times it can be bullish for months, right? Many times it can be bullish for months and years and bullish for months and years, all time highs, and, and they happen like in micro in microcosms in between, right? Uh, boom, well, that's not an all time high, right? Boom, that's an all time high. Boom, months and years, right here. Boom, months and years. Boom, you know, there will be pullbacks, but you know, there's always gonna be pullbacks. It's, uh, it's not like this is a bearish thing whatsoever. So I believe the market right here is um, very bullish, and that is why, because of the news on Friday, that was good news. Let's take a look at price earnings ratio of the S&P, right? So PE ratio by month. So what's going on here? Let's go to a monthly chart actually. And are we overvalued or undervalued? Let's go to like six months. So you can basically say, you know, draw, draw like a line here. And we spent a lot of time below this line, but you know, as of late when technology came into, you know, when tech really upgraded, computers came out, the internet came out, things earned higher valuations. You can see compared to where we've been the past 20 years, we've spent a lot of time in the past 20 years in this space. I'll draw it like this. This is where we are now. Remember, these are six months candles. So these are years and decades, right? And we've spent a little bit of time below this level. I'm gonna draw this in red. And we just spent a little bit of time below this level right here, right now. So can we go higher? Of course we can go higher. The S&P uh, PE ratio has been as high as 120, right? And that's when we had the 08, the real recession, right? 08, 09. Everything was, you think things are overvalued now? Well, look, the past couple of years here, remember these are six month candles. We spent two years here, way above 30, right? We spent, you know, from 98 to 04, six years here, way above 30. We spent two years here, way above 30, above 50. So the average, the PE ratio for the S&P right now is 25. 25 times, which, you know, if you take a look at the past 20 years, we're about average, right? We spent, you know, half the time up here, maybe half the time down here. We're about average for the past 25 years. We're not necessarily overvalued. We're not necessarily undervalued, just average. So you have an average valuation metric on the market in terms of how we're trading and the market's price or the market up compared to the market's earnings. Um, we're not terribly overvalued and we're making all time highs, which is super bullish. Presidential cycle, Bitcoin having these kind of things are gonna come into effect in terms of narrative. We're seeing these wars not have much of an effect right now, which is actually a good thing, right? There's war in the Middle East and Russia and China fears, China's tanking and the market's going up to all time highs. You have to take that as a bullish signal, right? You have to listen to what price is trying to tell you. All right, let's take a look at this now real quick. Uh, S&P stocks above the 50 day moving average, right? And you can see right here, you know, when you're up here above in the 90 percentile, it's usually a good time to sell or look or not sell, but take profits tightly. But you can see for the past six months, we've been coming down, right? We're down towards 60. Let me put this on a daily chart so you guys can see this better. S&P charts above the 50 day moving average. I like to, you know, keep this range. Remember the bull market started in October 23, October 23. Well, not the bull market, but it's most recent run, right? This big run, October 23. Let me show you what that looks like. Let's go back to the semiconductors. What October 23 right here, right? Big run, go look at any stocks, any tech stocks, especially huge run in the market, right? And so that is because of well, not because, but this is because we were down here. It's always a good time to buy when we're down here, right? So nice double bottom, big impulsive move. And are we overvalued now? Because we're at all time highs? No, look what's been happening for the past 40 days, 40, 50 days, right? Two or three months, about two months. We've been pulling on back. A lot of stocks have been pulled in on back below the 50 day moving average, right? We went from over 90% to 60% of stocks below. So these stocks that are pulling back, now the index is at all time highs. Well, guess what? We can bounce here, we can bounce here, right? Um, you know, we're not up here where we're overvalued. So again, is this all time high something to be scared about? Sometimes it rallies for days, weeks or months or years. Sometimes it, it kind of pulls back. 
in this one in particular, while well, the valuations are average, they're not overvalued. We saw the PE ratio compared to the past 25 years and the number of stocks above the 50 day moving average. We're not at this over 90 level where you know stocks have been rallying for so long. And now they're all very, very high. We actually have only 60%. So there's almost half the market that still has a ways to go to catch up. Another way to visualize this is by we look at the S&P, it's at all-time highs. But if we look at the RSP, which is an equal weighted S&P, right? Um, because we know that the S&P is a market is weighted by market cap. So most of the gains in the S&P are Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, right? The Magnificent Seven, Google and Amazon. Not even Tesla at this point. The Magnificent Six, because Tesla is doing bad. And so you know it's being carried. But what about the equal weighted? When you equal weight all 500 shares. Well, this is not at all-time highs yet. But this is something we've been watching. For me, this is the most important chart. So if you see stocks like Tesla, um, which has a, a big weighting, right, start to rally here, it's going to really help the, R, the RSP. But if the RSP starts breaking out, that's the confirmation you need that the markets, the overall markets, and most stocks are going to continue being bullish and that this S&P breakout is going to be bullish for the markets, right? This is a bullish pennant. We're testing the highs. We're getting real tight in terms of price action here. Fresh green tucks. And if this thing it was trying to break out, right? It made highs here on Friday. If this thing breaks out and you know it should be heading towards all-time highs soon, which means equally weighted. We're gonna have you know 455 other stocks heading towards all-time highs on, on average. Um, and so that's something to watch out for. The mid caps and the small caps kind of joining the party as well. And so for me, this is uh, the most important chart. You can look at this on a weekly chart and you're gonna be looking next week is gonna be very important. If you have a kind of a breakout candle here, then I think we're gonna have a bullish February and March. And if you have a black reversal candle, a black candle, especially if it close below the 10 week moving average and you have a red shade flip, then I would be alarmed. I would really move to probably a cash position and think this is gonna be one of those times where the S&P and all time highs few weeks but now we're going to pull back and look for that double bottom into the 50 that shake up below the 50 kind of thing in the coming months and then look to reinvest heavily especially if the sp5 the stocks below the, the 50 day comes back to the green section on the bottom very under that'd be another great opportunity to buy okay so this for me is the most important chart right now so keep an eye on this guys i love you just a quick update thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys tomorrow each and every day if you enjoy these videos leave a thumbs up for the youtube algorithm to to know and i'll see you in the next one peace